this is the part three of the customer success training. I'm gonna describe, it is the job description. All the things that you have to do every day and regularly, okay? So let's start. This is a little bit, of course, this is not a formal job description. I'm here to get into your veins, into your blood. I'm not here to create formalities, okay? And it could change. So in the future, you're gonna have sheets, you're gonna have all these, these documents and everything. But that's important is right now is get what is important, what is the cultural thing of your job description and relate, relate this to the values and the principles of the company. One of the things that's very important for us is create automation, is be efficient, okay? And give all the support to the painters and the, to the heroes we have, okay? So the first, the, one of the first steps you're gonna do in a job is create a code for the lead, for the protectee, for the homeowner, or for the potential client, okay? And this code I'm gonna, I'm gonna train you in the, in, the, in the next part of the training. And you have to, upload the, this customer in our CRM, okay? Right now, we are still growing, so we're still using Google Contacts. So you have to put this in your, in your, in your Google Contacts with the codes I'm gonna teach you in the, next, in the next part of the training, okay? This is the first thing, because when you have this, one of the most uh, important assets that we have the communication with the homeowners, it's the communication with the clientele, the protectee, because after our heroes, they're gonna know and they're gonna, they're gonna know where to go to save people, to make service, to delight people. Do you understand? After this, in general, when people contact us, they already have a demand, they already have something to do, okay? So if it's the case, we are gonna schedule the estimate, a meeting. And for now, as the, the way it goes, in the future, we are gonna automate some of this process. So some of the estimates is gonna be automated. But for now, all the jobs in general needs a visit. It needs a personal visit from one of our representatives, one of our, the guys that discover the areas, okay? And the clients and the, and the demands. Right now, like I'm the guy that do the most. So in general, you're gonna see my calendar, you're gonna input in my calendar the estimate, okay, to be done. In general, we ask for one hour window, okay? Always one hour window. The other companies in general, they do three hours, four hours window, we request one hour because I can manage myself, all the other guys, all the representatives, they can manage themselves to organize into one hour, okay? Sometimes they start, they finish, earlier so they can go earlier sometimes they take more time with another customer so they're gonna come to the like the middle of the hour window do you understand that it's very important this when after the guy do the uh, after the representative do the estimate you're gonna have the follow-up to get the sales okay one of the first things that you have to do is call the following day like you receive an estimate someone did an estimate if you are the customer success person related to this representative, you have to call the following day to check, to check any weak spot in the estimate that could make him lose the job. So I'm gonna say, hey, how it was with Augusto or with the other representative? Do you like him, how it was the process? Did you understand everything? Everything's clear for you? It's a job that you want to do right now? It's a job that you want to do in the future? So we're gonna capture some very valuable information so we don't lose any job for the competition. Do you understand? Why not? Because if you lose a job for the competition, you're gonna create a very bad experience for the, the customer. Do you understand? Because they're not heroes. So have to, you have to make sure you're gonna get the job. So the next day is very important to do. After the next day, you're gonna keep following up with this customer at least every week for the first month. And if you get the job, great. If you don't get the job, you have to make notes, why? And uh, you have to set up the customer in the following up annual listing for information, the, the broadcasting, okay? We're gonna al always making a communication with the customer even if you lose a job. Let's say that calling every week, you have a guy that, oh, I, I'm not, I still not um, convinced, so I still have to make, uh, my, my house is not ready, whatever, whatever. After, after one month, 
we lose the hot window of time. So you can put them in the broadcasting list. It's a different kind of follow-up, it's automated emails, it's the CRM is gonna take care. Don't need to call them every week anymore. Okay, do you understand? So for the for one month, we consider them hot. After one month, we consider them warm or cold, and you put them in the broadcast listing. Do you understand? Because I don't want you to keep all these guys that is not interested in your files or taking t your time. You have other things to do more important. Okay? So a follow, follow up list. If you get the job and you're gonna get 9% of the job, now our closing rate is the highest in the industry. So you have to target very high. So you have to support your representative. And if you get it, so we're gonna create a schedule for the job inspection manager. Okay? We don't start any job without a job inspection manager going to the job and organizing the job, seeing the right guys to go, seeing the materials, going again over the contract to see if the communication was clear, what was told by the, by the representative was great and everything like that, you understand? Because me as a representative, I stay 15, maximum 20 minutes with the customer. I, I cannot stay more. When you close a job, the job organizer manager, they have to go over again, all the details, to make no mistakes in the painting or in the service flow, in the job, job, job project flow. Do you understand? So we schedule this. And when you schedule this, the job organizer manager, they're gonna, he is gonna work with you to tell you the teams, who is gonna do, give you the contacts. Okay, because you are gonna be, the job managers don't have time to go to the computer. So you are gonna be the person who is gonna set up all the workflows and the scheduling. So we're gonna create again the GAN charts. We're gonna create the project management. So we're gonna help them to manage their jobs. We're gonna be their, their eyes and their scheduling, their vision for the future, do you understand? So for example, John has three different teams. John goes to a job and says, hey, great, I would like to know he decided he's going to use Lucas. And the job is going to start the 10th of uh, April. And he's going to communicate to you, the, hey, Lucas, and this job is 10th of April, and this job is going to take four days. We put always one day more than is expected, okay? So if it's three days, you put four days in the calendar. So we put a job for four days for Lucas and you block it. For the next job, when he goes, he says, hey, I would like to put Lucas for the 12th April. And you're gonna say, hey, John, you cannot do this because you have Lucas already blocked for this job. So we're gonna help the job manager organizers to manage the flow of the job. Do you remember when I gave to you that one of the things we need is create a support to the heroes, to the heroes is the, the our, our organizers, is our um, sergeants for the jobs. So we're gonna give their process access. So management support. So after this, when it comes the first day, you have to call all the jobs in the first day of implementation. There is when problems happen, do you understand? In general, the first day is a very delicate day. This like, or the, all the customers empathize with the, with the teams or not. Sometimes they don't empathize. It's not a technical problem. The guy don't do a, a good job. Sometimes the guys don't speak a good English and the customer is completely upset because they would like a guy that speak very good English. Sometimes the guy don't like the guy, the energy of the guy. We don't, I don't know, but sometimes, but the point is, the first day, the first point of contact in general tells a lot how the job is gonna happen after, do you understand? So it's very important that you contact all the customers, the homeowners, the first day of the job, after the job, after the end of, by, by the end of the day, of the middle of the day, say, hey, how is your experience with the, the team? Do you like the team? Is it, everything is going okay? Everything is not okay? What's going on? And you're gonna be the eye, the big eye. Do you remember the eye here? You're gonna be the big eye of the company right there. And if you see anything that's not going okay, you have to act right away because it's gonna, it's gonna predict a big problem, big deal, okay? And this support is very important. 
So after the first day, it's always good, it's always important to call in the middle of the job to see how the things is going on in the job. It's important for us to call during the middle of the job and the, the cost, this is not a training about the, the job organizer, but you're gonna be always in contact with the job organizer. We are not, you're not gonna be one doing the job, one managing the job, it's two guys helping managing the job. The I, which is the customer success, and the job organizer, which is the mind and the arms of the job, do you understand? Customer success, I can, I can relate it to the heart and the eyes of the, of the company, and the job organizer is gonna be the arms, and the brain, because he knows, he knows how to do, he knows everything, okay? At the end, if there is any problem, you come back, you come to the job manager, the job organizer, manager. If it's not handled, you can go to the group and ask some question and help, ask, ask for help. If it's not, you go to your, your, your superior, okay? So come to me. If you think, I don't care. If you think nobody's handling, come to me at the end because I make things happen. And in the future, you have to come with the guys that have like a high, that feel themselves, feel themselves owners of the company, or like associates of the company. I don't, I want everybody to feel owner. So go to a owner, director of the, of the, of, of the jobs. Um, you know, you have to go to a superior, okay? Or the director of customer success, which is Bruno, you can come to Bruno too. But if you, don't, if you don't feel that it's handled, go up to the top, up to the, the president, up to the CEO, up to whatever. You understand? Right now it's only me. <laughs> I don't have a director of uh, South Florida, but in the future, yeah. Okay. So after everything, you have the walkthrough. Okay. The guy is going to set up the walkthrough. Don't need to interfere in that. Okay. Only check in your calendars. Because you have all the all the all the time, all the scheduling for the finish of the jobs and the beginning of the new ones, you have to oversee this. You have to see if everything is going okay, because you know that Lucas is going to have a new job the next day, and you have to make sure that they walk through they do correct. So that's why I always ask to put one day more. If anything happens, we still have one day to catch up. Okay, and then after we can change it a little bit. If the guy is always perfect, whatever we don't do this for him. But as a, as a rule of the company, if the job takes three days, you put four days. If the job takes five days, you put six days. Okay? Always like that. After they walk through, everything is good. In general, everything is going to be okay. The guy get the check, they get, get the payment or set up the payment with the, with the company. You call them to, if they didn't get the check, you call them to start discussing about the payment. But first, you ask them how it was. If they are completely satisfied, and you get the NEPS score. I'm gonna send to you a documentation about NEPS score, it's called Net Promoter Score. You have to get a Net Promoter Score for all the jobs related to the team member, the team leader, and related to the job manager, okay, organizer. So in the ranks, is more or less like this. We have the helper, we have the painter, we have the painter that is a team leader, and you have the job, job organizer that in general holds all the jobs in the, in the region. Okay, so right now we have two job organizers. And then after this, you're gonna have, uh, right now is the CEO, because it's, we are only here, but you're gonna have the director of operations in the future, okay? So bottom line is, with the final walkthrough, call them and say, hey, in, um, in, uh, from one to 10, what would likely give you a rate to uh, refer us to your family member or a friend. From one to 10 means one, the worst case scenario, 10 the best case scenario. We're gonna receive this documentation after, okay? So I need to receive, I need to have an NPS score for all the jobs I make related to the job organizer and the team member because we need to know how good the guys is, okay? And we need to uh, nurture the guys that is doing great and we need to correct the guys or help or support the guy that's not doing so great, okay? And then after, for sure, your responsibilities is also get reviews, testimonials, video testimonials and reviews because our company grows to the authority we have in the local, okay? So you, ask, you, have, to have, you have to ask them, hey, how likely it was, 10th or 9th? You come to them and say, hey, can you do a review on Google? Can you do a review on Facebook? Google is better for us, okay? And uh, if it's seven or eight, 
it's a lower level. Could you could you send me an email to give me some ideas to make it better for you? Do you understand the difference? Because if you direct the guy, the guy sometimes they have to have steam. They have so much pressure. They are not like it's gonna happen one day that the guy don't like the team, okay, or they like they don't like the job. So the, he's gonna have so much pressure, and he's gonna need to talk, okay? He's gonna have steam to to release. If you don't if you don't follow up with him, he's gonna release, and he can release in short social media. It's gonna hurt us. If you come to him at the end, very humbly and a very because we really want to take care of our customer. And if you come to him and say, hey, what was your, your, your note? And he gave to you from A to down. And seven and eight is regular. So they're not going to talk too much good or bad for, about us. Six down is, in general, they have a, a potential risk to talk bad things about us for someone. Could be on the, on the internet or could be any place. So it's better that it's you than someone else. So you ask them, could you please send a, an email to me or could you please send an email to me to describe what you feel and what was your ideas for me to improve about the team member and about the process so I can improve my company and even to take the right measurements because we, we only want teams and captains in your company. So if you had something to say, we're gonna try to correct the person or if it's necessary and if you feel like he's not going to be correctable, why don't we remove him from, the, from the, our organization? And when we do this, when the guy sends you the message, he's going to release this team. So it's going to be less likely to go to the internet and start telling bad things about us. Do you understand? And at the same time, we get a lot of value because we get the critics and we get the ideas to improve ourselves. And you take this idea, you bring it right to me. Okay?